if mine's muted or not. You have to wait till it goes live. Yeah, so we just went live. All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. We have a special guest tonight. We'll have uh, we'll talk about here what we're gonna do shortly. But uh, we'll let him introduce himself, and then we'll get started with the unboxing, and then we'll kind of just go back and forth. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, Dan Kale here, Liquidation Pros. Everybody, can you hear me all right, Chris? Gotcha. All right, cool. Um, I think it's locked on you. or No, you're good. Came okay. back. Cool. Um, I am a, I guess you could still call it technically a part-time reseller. Uh, I still have a full-time job. Um, have four awesome kids. Um, love the outdoors, travel, fish, sports, you name it. But um, I manage a liquidation company that I started. Uh, I started four years ago. And um, six years ago, I got introduced to liquidation. So uh, my eBay and Amazon journey started really about six years ago. But I actually opened my first eBay account as a buyer in high school. That was 1999 when it was kind of really spreading and people were starting to talk about it. And um, I was actually buying like car electronics, like stereo systems, speakers, and then selling them to like friends in high school and whatnot. Um, 2002, I sold my first item on eBay. And then uh, 2004, at my corporate job that I'm still at now, been there for 19 years, um, our neighbor was a video game restoring company. And I was taking the trash out, like, not like I had, we have obviously a cleaning company for that, but I was taking some company, some other stuff to trash out. And I noticed like a couple of video games in the dumpster and uh, pulled one out as Grand Theft Auto for PlayStation 2. Okay. I was like, holy crap, there's two more. So whenever I went in there, there yeah. was a whole bag of them, tra contractor bag. So end up being over a hundred games. And that's when I really learned to power eBay because I was, I was doing back then. I don't, you could do buy it now, but I think it had to be on the auction. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you could, you couldn't just put up a listing and put, you know, quantity a hundred. You had to do a single listing. Right. So I had two of those running the day. And, um, I mean, I was in my early 20s, and from that point on, it just I kind of really understood how to buy and sell and how to ship. And um, I, if you've got a minute, I can tell you real quick what happened six years ago. Yeah, yeah, um, go ahead. I'm experienced on selling on eBay, have no idea about selling on Amazon, but um, and my, I actually put on Instagram um, last week because it was like a six year anniversary when I met my first liquidator locally. and my wife had to correct me because I thought I was looking for free pallets for building her an herb garden that you like mount to your house and then put herbs in it. I don't know if you've ever seen those before. Yeah, um, you, you actually wanted the wooden pallets, not what Yeah, I was looking for wooden pallets <laughs> and um, she corrected me. I forget what she said she needed it for. She needed it for some other craft project. I'll have to ask her. But um, long story short, I came across a guy selling pallets of video games for $125 for a full pallet. It was like the um, uh, rock star or whatever you want to call it. The, uh, the guitar. hero, the hero rock star, the full oh, wow. guitars, brand new in the box. S they weren't sealed. Um, what had happened is one of the stores had got flooded and some of them were like carton damaged. But if you took them out, the inner contents were still perfect. Um, yeah. There was video games in there, controllers. So for a couple of years, I sold a ton of video game stuff. And, um, that, that connection kind of dried up because he was getting a lot of Best Buy and Toys R Us stuff. And they started requiring everything to go overseas, at least through the local, like they used to have regional distributors and he was a regional, um, distributor for the mid Atlantic. So, I mean, I bought probably over 50 pallets from him in two years, but that's what really rocketed my, you know, reselling, got into Amazon, got suspended from Amazon, got back on Amazon. <laughs> And oh, now, wow. I'm, yeah, crushing on Amazon now. But like most new sellers, they don't, you know, I didn't understand all the rules. Uh, I wasn't, I was doing intercommingled inventory and a lot of the items I was getting, oh, yeah, yeah right. I didn't understand the uh, label and everything back then. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, people, other people were putting like used items as new. And even the returns right away, I was like, wait a minute, you know, this isn't even the same, like, um, I guess when you, 
like back then it was like PT Platinum sold a lot of phone cases. I had a bunch of phone cases from their brand new, still wrapped in like the cellophane you had to peel off. So there's no scratches on it, perfect. And then when I was recalling some inventory, it was a different packaging. I'm like, I don't even have that. Like, I didn't even understand that other sellers could, it would get mixed up if you didn't do, if you did do intercommingled inventory. So, right, right. I think that was in like 2015 that happened. I got reinstated like six months later. Um, and then it's just been, been growing from there. 2015, I, I got on liquidation.com. Um, I actually looked today. I had I've won over 126 auctions and spent over 25 grand with them uh, in the past. That's about yeah. what I've done. Yeah. But then I have other local connections and then other people that know what I do. Um, yep. Very little bit of retail arbitrage. I tried to go out yesterday. There's been a lot of posts about the TI-84 calculators. Uh, they're like, you know, 30 bucks or something. And I couldn't. I went to three stores. All three stores on Brickseed said they have four or six. I went to all three and didn't have any. Talk to a bunch of people. I'm like, this is, this is a total. <laughs> I'm gonna stick yeah. with liquidation. So, uh, retail arbitrage isn't really for me unless it's like I go to North Face Outlet or uh, like a major chain like Under Armour or something like that, and I hit their clearance section. That yep. that's normally pretty good for me because I'm ungated and uh, the name brands on Amazon. Yeah. So Nike, uh, Adidas, Patagonia, all those, uh, and normally. On Amazon, you can get the full sticker value for the for the name brand stuff. Oh yeah, we had a uh, we vacationed in Delaware, the state, and at the Tanger Outlets, they have uh, Delaware's tax free. So what I used to do when I first started, I say first started, kind of like really dabbling in it, I'd go to the coach store and I'd buy the the half price coaches purses and I'd sell them on eBay. But I haven't done that in a while. But that's that is that at the uh, Delaware Beach over Hoboth? Hoboth, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We uh, vacation in um, just outside of Bethany, so like twenty minutes south of Hoboth. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, where um, Starboard is. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, that's Dewey. We're the next town down. Yeah, yeah. We go there every summer. Nice. Then we'll have to hook up. Yeah. So it's interesting that you got into liquidation looking for the actual wooden pallet, and then you yep. have to find. So and, and prior to that, those few years, I I think two years earlier that I ha actually had an eBay store for a little bit because I was going to local auctions and finding like Dewalt drills, sporting goods, whatever. Just I used to call it beer money. Like the wife would give me a hard time about you know there spending you too much money on beer. So I was like, all right, well I'll take it out of my PayPal account. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So uh, it, it was like that at first, but when I ran across that deal. Um, it was unbelievable. And then since then, um, I did a truckload buyout from him. It was all Dynex and Rocketfish accessories. Yep. He had had them for two years. Um, and this was probably two or three years ago. I still have a bunch of small accessories over in storage that I need to liquidate and get rid of myself. I just don't have time. They're like $10 or less. But uh, And that's part of the business too. What people have to understand is you're going to get a lot of cheap stuff that's not worth putting online. So you have to have another plan for an outlet to get rid of the either super heavy stuff that's only 20 or 30 bucks or like the items that are 10 bucks or less. You either got a Facebook marketplace, yard sale, flea market, swap meets, whatever you want to call it. Um, you yeah. got to get out and, or you can do like, I've done a couple bulk loads where I'll post 500 phone cases for a hundred bucks, you know, just get rid of them on, on Craigslist um, or, or Facebook marketplace. So. And what I usually do, we have a neighborhood garage sale and uh, all my liquidation stuff that's either cheap, can't sell on eBay, won't ever sell. I've already made my profit on it. Usually I do a dollar sale, five to a dollar sale, and I'll just sell it, get rid of it, and make. I mean, you can make a ton of money with dollar sale. Yeah. Liquidation. I normally have a couple tables that everything's a dollar. I price everything one, three, five, and 10. If it's if it's more than 10, it's they're probably not going to buy it unless it's like a, I don't know, like a $50 item. But most right, right. my experience, most people that are doing the yard sales or flea markets are looking for, for good deals. So, and I'm just trying to get rid of stuff. Right. Yeah. At that point, you've already made your money. Exactly. But yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. And, uh, I've been following you for quite a while. Uh, I know we've been talking on and off for a couple months now or whatever, but, um, just felt like we kind of, um, are doing a lot of similar stuff and yep. I got to probably some tips I can help you with or help your audience and you can help mine. And, uh, yeah. mate with the main goal is just trying to, uh, I mean, like I said, with the retail arbitrage thing yesterday, I know you still do the thrifting, but for me, it's like, I don't know. It's just, 
it, I'm not going to say it's not fun. Like I enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it when I don't find anything. It's like, I could have been home <laughs> making a ton of money. I mean, on average, I only make like, I figured it out one at one point I was making between 50 and hundred bucks an hour for my time. So for me to go thrifting a retail arbitrage, do that drive time, uh, gas money, you know, all that stuff. And the, the bonus part about the liquidation is I'm doing it from home. So my kids are running around, they're with me. You know, the wife is right upstairs or she comes down and helps, you know, occasionally. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to liquidation for me because, you know, in an hour, you know, next week I could have $5,000 worth of inventory show up. Whereas right. how, how many thrift stores do you have to go to or Walmarts to get that much inventory? Right. And that's the, the benefit of liquidation, right? You, it comes to your house. You have all the product there. You yeah. source online. Like I'll, my downtime at work, you know, if I get a couple minutes, I'll go look, look for things, add it to my watch list, take a mental note when it expires and go bid on it. Yeah. So uh, Darren Adams, thank you for the super chat as well as Hickory Springs. Thank you. Hickory Springs actually shared my Poshmark closet. So I appreciate the $5 super chat. And in addition to what uh, Dan said, uh, we're looking at doing a weekly show, but probably going to be Tuesday or Thursdays at 10. We still got to nail out the details. We're probably gonna, we're going to alternate channels. So uh, Thursday nights, we'll probably be going back and forth. Uh, stay tuned in the Facebook group as well. But uh, as, as he said, you know, there's not, I don't think there's really any sort of liquidation panel chat going on, kind of tips and tricks on liquidation. Uh, and you're doing a little different things than I am. So it's kind of good to be able to bounce things back off each other and, and uh, see what's going on. Yeah, I totally agree. And it just give, give some perspective. Um, I've had over 15,000 units sold on eBay and about a little bit less than that on Amazon, but Amazon, I tend to sell the higher dollar stuff. Um, and then one, one main thing about liquidation, especially when you're starting to really get into bulk, when you're buying multiple pallets is you'll get, one unit of 50 items. It might take me two years to sell it, but that's one listing that's just going to sell depending yeah. on how fast it is. And um, I, I'm i like you, I think you do list, do you do um, 30 day or do you, you do set it and forget it, right? Good cancel, just like you, I'm trying to minimize my time. Exactly. Right there, good deal canceled, I don't have to touch. Yeah, and I mean, I can, we can have discussions, we have, we can put topics up there. I've done research on a lot of this stuff. Like people say, well, if you, you know, why are you paying for a store or why are you doing a good kill canceled? I've, um, I've actually searched my, I've searched items that are two years old by, by a very vague name and it still shows up in search and I'm good till canceled. And it's been sitting there for, now. It's a, it's a phone case for like an iPhone six that just nobody wants. You know, right. you know what I mean? It's not a, it's not really nothing I need to do on my listing, but I go, what you can do is go to an incognito page and look it up. And it's like, I'm still showing up in his best match within the top three. So why, you know, why, why would I keep resetting these listings every 30 days? Other, I do understand the idea of changing your pricing and yep. then maybe modifying pictures or this or that. But to me, that takes time. Um, what I normally do is I run sales and I'll run my sales based on how long it's been in my inventory. So something like that, if it is two years, I'm really running 50%. Um, after 30 days, I'll put stuff 10 to 15%, depending on what it is. Um, cause you also have to understand like right now we're buying a lot of winter stuff and I'm not, I'm not dependent on that selling right now during this winter season. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fine with that selling next year. So I don't want to mark that down into a spring summer season when I can hold it and get full value next year. So you always got to be thinking about the seasonality of items. And when you buy into this, you're investing, it's like almost buying like a stock. You, you want to buy brands that you know are going to be around and then, you want to be able to not tie up too much money to where you can sit and get full value. Um, right. So, and that's, I mean, it's up to your advantage. If you can hold on to it and uh, have the cash flow to keep it at that price and hold on to it and make your money. I think, you know, like you said, I have some liquidated items out there. I actually just sold an iPhone six, uh, what Spigen, Spigen case today, $13 best offer. And that's all profit at that point. I've already made my money because with liquidation, I find that the the top of the manifest items, I'll sell those within the month and then I make my money back. I'll put all the lower tier stuff. I'll still list them. I'll keep them up there. I can afford to let them sit because I've already made my money and I can invest the money I, ever, I made into other lots and kind of snowball it. Nice. Totally agree. So, uh, Pat D's, you're from Maryland, correct, Dan? I'm from Maryland, yep. 
uh, I think Pat D is up in uh, PA, not far from me. Lancaster or uh, Poconos, you'll have to confirm. Yeah, it just said PA. And then um, we go up there. I hit the, um, we go once or twice a year to um, the outlets, and it's called Lancaster or Lancaster, however you want to call it. Pat Diesel could probably correct me. Yeah. But, um, they have a really nice outlet selection up there. Uh, it's like Amish country, so you can kind of get out in the country a little bit, get out of the suburbs, and uh, it's only probably 45, 50 minutes from my house. But mm -hmm. they, they have everything there. And then, like you said, um, at the beach, we hit, there's, depending on which way I go to the beach, there's an, other sets of outlets I could swing by. But yep. I don't, I'm not dependent on that. I have, I can get so much inventory to ship to my house that it's not, it's not an issue. And, and see, that's where you said before, like, thrifting right it's only the one i go to is five minutes from my work i go at lunch i eat i i like getting out of the office so i go out there find some things shoot i can find a, a cashmere sweater for five dollars and sell it for a hundred so the thrill of finding that stuff i like and you kind of have the ability to make high profit or high dollar items on that stuff it's not kind of my bread and butter but really the whole liquidation getting it and getting multiple quantities in where i don't have to go anywhere it's perfect yeah, in my lunch break, I'm normally bidding on auctions and looking at yeah. them and <laughs> preparing for either when they're going off and setting reminders. And so, what? Uh, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I do the 410s. So, like yeah. Thursday nights are good for me because uh, Monday through Thursday is normally long days. And then um, I work normally nights on the business after the kids go to bed from typically like 8 to 10 or 11 at night. So, I get a couple hours there. Um, I have, I do have help. Um, I do have employees that help me out. They are uh, high school, college kids, so they help whenever their schedule allows. It's only, on average, it's normally only five to ten hours a week between a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And then I have a virtual assistant that does all my eBay listings. So, a lot of these different things we can cover in upcoming weeks in the the show. You know, topic as far as oh, tips yeah. and tricks for that. I mean, I'm. Uh, definitely not a pro. I, I mean, I call myself liquidation pros, but, uh, <laughs> this, this is my, uh, my first go at it and I'm, I'm feeling like I'm doing pretty good, but there's obviously always people that are doing bigger and better. But my thing is like, I can focus like, okay, so you, you're running out of your house. Okay. So do I, Oh, you don't have a garage. Neither do I, Oh, you don't have uh, steps to go down to your basement from the outside. Neither do I. I carry everything through my house. Like there is no excuses to doing this. It, it definitely can be done. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I basically said I started with 200 bucks. I had flipped out enough through auctions to where when that opportunity came for the first three pallets, I had the money in the account in PayPal, uh, sent it directly to him. And it's been, you know, nonstop ever since then. Yep. Question, where in Maryland are you around? I'm in Bel Air. And then John asked if you're full time. Never more. I'm, I mean... I guess you would have to define full time. I, I, I always, uh, I guess, uh, kind of question that question because, like, certain people, I mean, I love Wade, but he's like, I'm full time. But yet he's constantly on Instagram and YouTube and all that. And I'm like, yeah, you're full time, but you're also a full time YouTuber, right? Or social media expert. Um, so it's like, well, how many hours do you need to put into something to be full time? Uh, yeah, well, I would consider right. myself. Now, I would consider myself a professional because the amount of time I've been doing it and how many hours I put into it. Um, I normally put about 30 hours, 20 to 30 hours into the liquidation business and then 40 hours, 35 to 40 hours in my corporate job. I'd say the same, right? So it's almost like you could say it's your second full time. Exactly. I'm pretty much, I, I go from 9, 9.30 at night to about 1, 2 a.m., uh, so, and then you, that's not counting during the day when you're thrifting or looking at the computer for things, <laughs> arranging payment, arranging shipment. Um, yep. So, but it's all fun, right? It's, we wouldn't do it if we didn't like it. Agreed. Are you going to ASD? Uh, no, I'm probably not going to make it out this year. I'd like to, I'm working on a, um, I, I want to call it a private label. I'm actually working on a brand. I'm getting ready. I'm actually testing it right now on Amazon. Um, in the past 30 days, I got 11 sales doing Merchant Fulfilled. So it seems like oh, a wow. product that's going to be pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, it's not something that um, anybody can really replicate. Um, put it this way. You can't replicate it unless you can go to your lumber mill and have them make it for you. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's not a... Uh, 
a easily made product from China. It's USA. And uh, so I want to go out. I, I need an accessory to this product. And I've reached out to a couple of people in Alibaba for this particular accessory. So I thought about going out there to try to find that uh, because I'm not getting a whole lot of response from there. Um, oh. But yeah, I don't, we're going now to um, Minnesota in August. So I'm taking a week already for that. Actually, like 10 days. So any other like big trips would be tough. Yeah. If I did, if I did anything, I'd probably actually go to eBay open just cause. Yeah. Just to hang out with everybody that I follow. Really. I don't really follow. A whole, I follow a few Amazon sellers. I mean like bearded picker, a um, yep. couple other guys, but most of the people I follow more is like the eBay stuff. What would you say? What percentage do you have on eBay versus Amazon? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say right now. I have like around 60, 60 grand listed on eBay. Um, Amazon. I have a lot of, I do also have a couple wholesale deals from a couple vendors that where I can just order the product, pay for it and then have it shipped directly to the warehouse. Oh, so, nice. Okay. Yeah. But last year I did more in sales on Amazon than eBay. Oh, wow. And would you say mostly merchant or FBA? No, it's 99.9% .9 FBA. This is oh. just, I do, um, I'll do like a, some, a test run if I'm doing a new item and merchant to see if there's any traction before, yeah. I, like, before I go into a whole lot of uh, time on packaging, logo, name, all that stuff. I will uh, kind of put a generic listing up and see what's, what happens. So to get 10 sales in 30 days on kind of a ger generic listing that I created, I'm, I feel like I'm on to something with that one. Um, I've had a couple other products, some stuff in the fishing category um that I've done really well on but these were private label items that it only took a matter of like 30 to 60 days after mine you know got really hot to where mm -hmm. everyone was selling the same thing so you really if, you, if you're going to do that you really have to find something that can't be replicated very easily do you invest in any ppc campaigns yeah for the for those types of items i do and for my um for my brands that are that I'm running, I do as well. Not my brands, but the brands I'm representing, the wholesale deals. Dude, that's awesome, right? Because you have you have that, the wholesale deals, people can just call up. Um, I think it's also valuable too. Um, if you're gonna dabble in liquidation, start small, right? Smart small packages, liquidation.com, bulk, whatever you want to look at. But also, I don't have one yet. I know there's a couple in Columbus, but local liquidators that you can go pick up pallets. I think that's key because shipping could kill you. Yep. Well, and that's the thing with me. Like you want to build up um, a business to where if you need to take a couple of weeks away from it or you can't invest fully in it, it's still operating. You're still getting sales. You're still recurring the same amount of revenue. Like, you know, there's periods of time where having children, different things that, you know, you take time away from the business. So like for right now, I'm trying to focus on, um, especially now that the, I've kind of looked at these sales a little closer, I'm going to be focusing on this, uh, brand, I guess you want to call it. It's not really private label. And yeah. that's going to take away time from the liquidation. But, you know, as I was talking to you, I had three pallets come in yesterday and I have two coming next week. All that stuff will be processed over the upcoming three or four weeks by my help. And that's, uh, what was it? 20? That's about, it's a $30,000 worth of inventory. So, you know, yeah. that's 30, that's about two months worth of inventory. That's awesome. I mean, I'm probably right on the verge. I'm thinking about it getting help just to because i'm backlogging right now if i can get someone to at least go through it and take pictures at least get me started on the listing or i can just sit down i don't have to do anything i could just list uh and that's where we kind of where can you save time where can you implement processes to to get stuff up quicker yeah we can go into detail kind of about how i do it then you can you know spin off of that and then once we come up with what we think is the best game plan we can let kind of everyone know you know what my challenges were and then it'll be cool to see you kind of starting that process, you know, and documenting it. Whereas I didn't have any doc, I didn't have documentation of really anything I was doing other than a couple pictures here and there. So right. I just yeah. started YouTube about six months ago and I really haven't put a whole lot of time into it. Right. Right. Nice. So um, how's everybody doing in chat? Someone asked, uh, do you sell wholesale lots? Um, I'm actually, I have before, uh, through my Instagram, I'm trying to come up with a scenario for, I have a ton of brand new, 
um, wholesale clothing that came from Costco, but it's like Costco sells it for between 10 to $20. So it's, but I don't know if you guys are familiar with Costco. It's like if they sell an Adidas pair of pants for 20, it's probably retails for like $29.99 or $34.99. Like it's a, uh, they sell it at a much lower price than wholesale. So these are like 15, when I say like a $15 item, it's probably really like a $20 item. But um, I just don't have the manpower to go through it all. I'm talking like a couple hundred pieces of clothing. So I don't do Poshmark yet. And I feel like it could be good for Poshmark. Oh, yeah. But I, I don't really know. Um, they're not like, so here's how I do it too, is I'll go through and I'll cherry pick all the premium brands like North Face, Nike, Adidas. When I get lots of clothing, I sell a lot of clothing. And we'll take the lower end stuff to the flea market. And all I'm trying to do there or have yard sales is recoup what it costs me to get to get that clothing. So if I won the lot for 20% on a you know $20 item, that's four bucks. So at my at my flea market yard sale, I'd sell that item for four dollars. I would do the same thing for like a wholesale. Someone's looking to get. I mean, you're only probably going to make five to ten bucks off of each shirt, but um, right. for me, I, for me, I have to pay someone to look at it, bag it, and I have to pay somebody to list it. So it's not really worth my time. We're like, I've almost gone away from the twenty-five dollar mark, and I'm getting close to like thirty dollars or higher is kind of what I'm looking at. I think that comes with experience too, right? We've all started with the lower sale price as we start to understand the market and where to get things. But no matter what, you have to start somewhere because if you only have like two hundred bucks to get into this, you're not you're not right. going to be able to buy a three thousand dollar lot. You gotta you gotta start somewhere. So you gotta keep building that. I mean, as you heard me talk earlier, is you know twenty really 2012, 2013, I started getting kind of some momentum, and then um, was it twenty? What did I say? Six twenty thirteen is when I got my first liquidation deal. So it's been a long process. Yeah. Definitely learn along the way. All right, so I can start going through this box here and you can give your input. So I don't know about you, but when I get a liquidation, half the time it's busted and UPS retapes it. Yep. So that's a perfect example. Yeah, look at that. It's actually reboxed too, wasn't it? Uh, no, same box. Okay. Um, I do need to get, uh, so I visited the liquidation warehouse. When I go back there, I need to get some video this time, but uh, I don't know what this one is. They've implemented some processes, and this one's out of Indiana. So you're going to see they've started to put names on it. So they're trying to tag out, tie out names to lots to see. So Loretta did my my lot. Yeah, I've seen, I have seen that. Um, it's been... Probably about a month and a half or two months before I got anything from them. But like I said, I bought a ton. Uh, I just found some other sources that I've focused. I found, you know, liquidation.com is probably the best place to get to dive in if you're doing the Amazon source right. for Amazon. Um, you, you know, you're it's a good place to learn the ropes, figure figure out how it all works. But from there, it'll open you up to other opportunities, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Oh yeah. Um. For those of you that just joined the chat or the show, uh, if, make sure you follow Liquidation Pro. That's Dan. Uh, I think Pac-Man was linking his channel. Make sure you go sub to his channel. We're going to be doing a weekly show. And same name on Instagram, correct? Yep. And uh, Twitter, but I don't even know how to use Twitter. Yeah. I have Twitter <laughs> as well, but I just uh, mainly it's linked from Poshmark and other junk. Well, when I put my first YouTube video up, it said, do you want to send it to Twitter? I'm like, okay, sure. So, yeah. Um, while you're opening that, someone's asking about shipping costs killing them. Um, would I, the way I do it, I think I do it a little different than you. Is I, I know you've gotten pallets before, but once I win one lot for the next two or three days, I'm trying to fill a pallet. So that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And on average, when you do that, your shipping per lot is going to be between 40 to 50 bucks. Now, it's going to depend on how far you are. I'm in Maryland, and I'm buying it from Indiana. So um, they say the cheapest you'll get it down to is 42 I think it says that when you – it might have changed recently because all the rates are going up. It's like but, 80 now. It's 60 or 80 it's the And then it changed, they changed the boxes last year. The boxes are a little bit uh, smaller and taller. So I couldn't get a straight answer from uh, customer support whether it was 12 or 16 boxes that you can fit on a pallet. But typically if you look at the lot, they're going to take an overhead picture of each box that's in that lot. Yep. So you, as you win them, 
mark down how many boxes it is. And then we need to confirm if it's 12 or 16. But once you hit yeah. that mark, you need to stop and call them up and get it consolidated to a pallet. Um, yeah. I was getting pallets for around 260 bucks, one pallet, for like 260 bucks delivered. And if you split that up between four or five lots, and here's the other tip too. There's a lot of lots. They're like 200 pounds. There are two or three boxes that no one wants to mess with because shipping's like 200 bucks. Exactly. When, when, you, when you add that to the pallet, it's only 45 or 50. You're going to have a better advantage and you, you could potentially pay a little bit more than most people are willing to. And keep in mind too, I learned this the hard way. When you want to consolidate shipping, like Dan's talking about, make sure if you win one from Vegas, Buy only lots from Vegas because you cannot right. consolidate shipping from multiple warehouses. Yep. Has to be the same warehouse. Yep. And always, I always, there's enough lots and at all the different places. Vegas and Indiana have the most, I believe. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, I, I just based it based on, based on what side of country you're on, you should bid on one of those two. And once you win one, just, just sort it only by that, uh, that warehouse. Yep. And they changed their name. It's now, I think it's now a source from Amazon. It used to be something else, Amazon. But look for Amazon. You'll yeah. see it. I'm sure you you remember when it used to be online returns, right? Yeah, exactly. That was, that was the, so that's before everyone knew it was actually um, Amazon stuff. And right. was, back then, it was like gold mine. You're paying like 10% for Amazon returns. It was, it was beautiful. I just found out they had, uh, it was it Macy's and uh, Bed Bath Beyond. On there as well? Uh -huh. So I got to get, I forget what names they had, but they're not those names. I did a Macy's video. I actually went and picked up a pallet from the warehouse. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you brought your trailer, right? Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, they oh. shorted me a box. Oh, they did? Yeah. But what I got did it. I did get, it wasn't liquidation.com though. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, um, it was my local distribution center here in Maryland. It's like right up the street from me, like literally like 10 minutes away. I have a, massive macy's warehouse yeah uh reseller king asks, can you pick up lots yourself yes you can as long as it says uh buy a range of shipment once you win the lot and you go to pay for it you click on arrange your own shipping and they'll zero out the shipping and then you can do what you want at that point uh pacman asks any tips on networking finding less common traditional sources yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of different tips I do for that. Um, I mean, one thing you can do is find the some of the bigger wholesalers, whether they're on Amazon, eBay, um, and they have products. If Say it's like a sporting goods vendor who's a wholesaler, or in my case, I deal with a, a golf vendor uh, and an electronics vendor. I just reached out to them a few years ago, the cold, a cold email followed up, which eventually turned to a cold call, and told them what I did. You know, I, I'm looking for returns. Um, my email said, are you tired of dealing with returns? Question mark. And then in the body, I said, I'm buying returns, paying, you know, top dollar. Uh, we help, you know, sellers liquidate items. And from that, I've probably made like 20 different, um, 20 different cold emails. I've gotten two sources that way. So that's one way you can, you can do it. Um, what else am I thinking here? I had something else that I was thinking about. Oh, well, you so face the Facebook groups. I know you've, you've uh, plugged a few, um, the yep. product source and one one's pretty decent. Um, mm -hmm. the one thing I will say is I always try to get as directly from the source as possible. Um, there are some guys that will have a warehouse and they will similar to what I, what I'm offering for clothing. They'll go through and cherry pick the hundred, two hundred dollar items. They're making their money on the entire lot. And then they're selling, they're still selling you good inventory. But you're not if you get it directly from Amazon or directly from Macy's or whatever, you know that no one else has touched it in between. Right. Um, so you have the you know the potential to to get better items that way. Um, key thing to think about too, when you're buying those Amazon, those larger company pallets, the companies you're buying them from have to move a certain amount of product. So they're not gonna touch them. They're gonna do their work on them and they're gonna sell them to you. Right. So they're not gonna cherry pick the item. Uh, most likely they have to move a certain other pallets or else Amazon will take their contract with someone else. Yep. All right. Uh, the other, while you're opening, uh, the other thing you could do is Google, um, just some Google searching and Google maps, especially Google maps, liquidation, liquidator, wholesale. And um, at least for me, I found a couple other local 
uh, connections within like 50 miles. Now these are kind of those third party liquidators where they're buying it and selling off lots, but I mean, there's still money to be made there, especially if you're starting out. All right. So as we go through these, let's we'll get your opinion. Fire starter, charcoal, wood, light, lights, charcoal, and wood fires. Sweet. That's going to Right. Use that to summer. Yeah. This, I think, was one of the higher price items. It's a barometer. So let's open this up. Yeah. You got to watch the needles on those. A lot of times the needle will be a little bit bent, and then you can right. typically bend it back. But if it shows up to someone's house and it's like that with Amazon, I mean, if there's any kind of flaws, they're returning it. Oh, yeah. But does not look bent. Obviously, we'll do some more testing. But there you go. It's yeah, it's got glass case, so nice. That's awesome. Now some of the the other things I end up using for myself, like this car care stuff. That's an easy dollar each yep. car sale. I'm gonna buy that locally, five bucks maybe. So keep in mind, this is a. I showed the other two lots. I still have another box, but this is a housewares. Look at a colander, but it's bent. So see if the wife, yeah, see if the wife needs a new one. Yeah. <laughs> People will still buy that yard sales for a buck. Oh, easily. Bend it out, someone will buy it. Uh Honeywell, this I don't know if this is a heater or what. Yeah. Not sure on that one. Uh oh, these are cool. So Phillips Hue stuff. They sell typically pretty well if you get the A19 starter packs with the bridges and all that. You can get good money for those. Yeah. Now, have you noticed, because you're doing more buying on there, Are they have they stopped putting the um, UPCs on a lot of them? Yeah, I think, uh, is it Vegas, I think, still does it? Occasionally, it's been probably 90% not, 10% do. But the stickers that match a manifest, I rarely see those now. Yeah. <clears throat> that sucks. That was a big help for – those were awesome because you could tell if it said assorted merchandise or it actually had the product name on it. Because when I go to match it to the manifest, I have to find it manually. Exactly. Versus a control F. But it, it, then you look at some of the things that Amazon takes back. Look at this. It's a uh, toilet plunger or a <laughs> flapper. Look at that. Yeah. Just getting it thrown away. Uh, fresh a washing machine cleaner. I mean, for me, a lot of that stuff, I'm throwing dollar stickers on it and just putting it in a box. And you know what I mean? Do you so you hold on to it until you can have like a uh, get rid of sale? Yeah. Yep. Do you have? There's um uh, on Amazon you can go in there. It might be. I think it's in my link tree or my links. I may not have. Am I getting echo? Or are you good? No, you're good. Okay. You can. You can buy like the 100 packs of the colored stickers. And then when you go to the company's website, you can download the, the printout for it, the Microsoft Word yeah. um, or Excel, I think it is. And you can print your own, you can put your own numbers in. So you want to do like $1, $3, $5, $10. Or you can make them all $1. And then you can just peel it, you, you know, peel and stick those as you go. Because like you were already looking to manifest and you have an idea what the retail is. Yep. Um, you have a good gauge on what the price of that rate then and there, as opposed to you know putting it down and then having to do it all over again. Right. So I'm only, we'll we'll price stuff as we go. And then that's perfect, right? You want to minimize your touches. Yep. So that's where I kind of think about if I have extra, these extra boxes around, if we if I could do that as I'm opening them, and then I could store them for when it's warmer out, they're already priced. I don't have to reprice them at that point. Exactly. Hand whisker. I hate the food stuff just because most likely they're used. Yeah, that brand's pretty decent. Though. I sold a lot of their stuff. Bella? Yep. Interesting. All right. They make like coffee stuff, coffee little coffee pots, different stuff like that. Pet safe. Indoor bark control. I haven't seen that one. Collars sell pretty well. And then the last thing in this box is a Quick box. Fine line finish sprayer by Home Right. Oh, that might be decent. Yeah. But did you ever figure out what this means, the pink dot? Yeah, it's um they I think it means they returned it for being defective or broken. Like it 
he already has been flagged for having some kind of issue. I don't know that liquidation.com does it. I think it comes from Amazon that way. Yeah. I mean, I've had some pink dots that are brand new. Yeah, I have too. But if the if the customer returns it a certain way, they may sometimes they I think they flag it ahead of time. Right. So the glitch asked, any ever, ever bought any TV lots? I have not. Have you? No. So when I was touring their warehouse, um, they showed me their TV station where they were bringing stuff in. And I think they said they're graded by Sony. And that they validated the grading. So I think it's like A through E. Uh, A's are flawless. B's are close to flawless. C is maybe has a nick on the back of the screen or is missing the remote or cord, but they still work. And then once you get down from there, I think it's salvage. Don't quote me on those, but that's basically telling you their gradings are legit. So when you go on the website and you look at the different, and they have definitions, and they have uh, grading sheets, and they'll tell you in each grading sheet if there's a mark on it, if it still turns on, if it's missing pieces. Um, they sounded pretty awesome the way they were telling me about them. And that's the one thing you need to think about um, when you're thinking about bidding on liquidation is – what the other person on the other end is bidding on this stuff for everyone is buying it for different reasons me and you are both online sellers primarily that's you know 99 percent of the money we make is online other people are buying items for their pawn shop or for their flea market store so they have a different um they have a different business model than we do yeah. um therefore they may be willing to pay a little bit more because they know that i mean some of the stuff i see like the flea market's crazy people are charging like Four hundred dollars for a fifty-inch TV. You can go to Walmart and buy a brand new one for five hundred. Like, and they're they're paying for it. Like, so right. I found like a lot of that that kind of stuff and the electronics, a lot of the video game stuff. For me, the research I've done, uh, it's just not worth it to me. I think a lot of that stuff's going into some storefront. Um, so they're they're able to pay a little bit more because you got to figure we we have the online the selling fees and we also have shipping fees. Uh, they don't have they have overhead for their store or their shop or their swap meet or the flea market. But, you know, other than that, they don't have, you know, we have a higher over high overhead just because of being, you know, online with shipping and selling fees. Right. And it's, if you think about, I mean, liquidation in general, you have to get creative. And I think what I've heard, the most creative thing I've heard of, and I'm sure there's other things, but people will buy the salvage TVs and they'll rip them apart. And they'll sell the motherboards, mm -hmm. they'll sell everything inside, and they'll make a killing on it. Yep. So their business model is perfect for that, right? Because they're able to make money on stuff other people can't. Yep. There's big business in parting stuff out if you got the time. But um, the thing with a lot of that stuff is unless, like, can you train someone to do that? Or are you going to make yourself solely reliable for what happens in your business? I'm right. trying to build, build something to where I can teach other people to do it. It's, I mean, you could find someone to do that, but it's going to be tough. Yep. It's all about time. That's why. Right. I mean, I love electronics and whatnot, but I mean, could you imagine uh, having an uh, 18 year old go through a vintage VCR and test it properly and wrap it and get it ready for Amazon? I cool. mean, VCR. It, it would be uh, certain items are tough to do. And like I said earlier, that's why I try to focus on clothing now because it's pretty easy to train people how to inspect. Uh, bag and prep for online sale right yeah but we do a lot of, like i um i do a lot of small electronics like um mofi outer box life proof i know a lot of people are like oh you'll get you'll get banned from ebay or you'll get a vero i've never had any issues because 100 mm -hmm. positive feedback over six thousand or 5700 feedback ratings once you get to a certain level they just look at your account and say oh no this this guy's not selling counterfeit because he would have had issues you know you can't you right. can't go that long and then uh, all of a sudden be a fake guy it's, so that's something to consider about build up your account and then you can pretty much sell anything so all, right. all right uh someone asked how do you manage a virtual assistant uh I manage mine through upwork What are some things to look for at a flea market? Anything you can make money on. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's where you talk about like thrift store, even liquidation. When you go on the website, you walk through the store, 
there's a every corner has profit in it. Yeah. I mean, I started looking at if you look at liquidation.com, you look at the 9 a.m. lots that are ending. A lot of times, the 9 a.m. lots, no one's looking at them. Same and, thing. Uh, t was it 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. lots? Those are always pretty decent too. 8:55 and like 9:30. Yep. You get those late ones. Either people are sleeping or not looking. You can get a $75 auction. Obviously, you're going to pay $80 in shipping, but uh, that's still cheap in comparison to what you'll pay for it around noon, one o'clock. And like when you're trying to fill a pallet, I don't care what people say. Like that for 75 plus another 45 shipping, and for 1500 dollars worth of stuff, you snag that up. I don't care what's in it because there's going to be two or three items that you'll make all your money back, and then you can probably triple your money and have a bunch of other flea market stuff or yard sale stuff. Yeah. $75, that's a drop in the bucket. I've had a couple of the, if you, um, uh, the office office and supplies, whatever it is, a lot of those go for 75 to a hundred bucks. And I've gotten brand new phone systems, like six cordless phones, 120 bucks on eBay. No problem. It's like unbelievable. But you also get four reams of paper. It's like, all right, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, stocked, I'm stocked up on paper for two years. Uh, that's where I give it to my kids and say, draw whatever you want. Right. But yeah, that's where you always get the pens, mm -hmm. dry erase markers, and reams of paper that are busted open. Liquidation.com items here. I got a hundred of these. I got all the every single color gel pen you can possibly imagine. Oh, yeah, look at that right there. All those there you go. Yeah. That's a fun the only, stuff, random junk. The only thing that's worrying me about the liquidation, uh, the Amazon itself, is all the the uh, private label, the third party kind of crap you're getting now. It's it just keeps going, getting more and more and more, um, and no matter what, that's that's gonna be hard for them to stop that. But you, I'm finding that you're getting a lot more junk than you were three or four years ago. Well, that's where in the electronics boxes you're getting the like uh, the, half the manifest and lower. A lot of it is that third party private label that you're not gonna make a dollar or two on, depending it works. And I've found that. The last few that I've been buying was health and beauty because it's a lot harder to do private label in that category. Um, yeah. It's riskier to sell, but um, I mean, if you got insurance and you're willing to take the chance, you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not selling outdated stuff, but. Right. Exactly. So. All right. Well, we've been going for 50 minutes. So any last words? Um, no, I mean, everyone just get out there and, like I said, you can do you can do it from your home computer. Take a look, find a find a lot you like, and um, make a bid, and hopefully you make some money on that, and just keep flipping it. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't I didn't take any really funds out of my account for the first two years before I started actually paying myself. So it takes a little while to get it up and rolling to where um, you know you can actually buy some pretty big lots. Uh, and now I'm now I pay myself a salary, or it's actually called an owner draw, but. There you go. So, well, uh, again, this will be a weekly show next week. Dan, we'll have it on your channel. Sounds good. Well, uh, I'll drop the link down below. Pac-Man was putting in the chat, so if you're watching after the fact, open the chat. You'll see it up there as well as in the description. Uh, we'll have weekly topics around liquidation, uh, anything along selling, where to sell. But uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks, guys. See you.